So, first off, congratulations on obviously the wedding, which is one of many new things in your life. Um, you. Does it has it sunk in yet? It's only been a couple of weeks. Do you feel like uh, uh, Mrs.? Um, I feel so proud. I still, you know, I said to Donnie the other day, I looked at him, I said, do you walk around going, oh my God, we're married. He's like, yeah, but I'm also walking around going, this feels so right. Why didn't we do it a year ago? <laughs> like, well, we just met a year ago. Right. So I think we're both still in this wonderful giddy, you know, phase that I hope stays for the rest of our lives. Now, is anything different other than that? I, you know, do you talk to each other different? Is your family dynamic any different? Or is it just, you know, a, a momentous day that you just, you know, celebrated? You know, I feel like that the, that the major thing that has changed is watching my son for the first time um, look like he, he feels safe. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but, you know, it's just been me and him for so long as a single mom. And I can tell when Donnie comes home from work, and this is every day, Donnie walks in the door and Evan screams his name and runs down the spiral staircase and jumps in his arms and right. says, I'm so happy you're home, Donnie. And to have your son um, a to do that and, and love someone like that, I know it's because he feels safe now and I, I, that makes me feel really good. So that's been the best change. That's amazing. Now they say that you can't get hitched without a hitch. So I want to know if there was anything that kind of went wrong on your wedding day or un <laughs> any unexpected surprise. You know, I was really worried about the, um, the, the weather. So I moved the wedding inside. Um, and, uh, God, there was really nothing, you know, I had my sister's date got a little bit tipsy. I had to have a little talk with him. Um, and the other, other thing is I lost more weight than I expected. <laughs> um, and my wedding dress kept kind of sliding down. It was strapless. Um, I was, I'm currently and still very proudly a, a spokesperson for Skinny Sticks. And right. a friend of mine referred to me, you know, before the wedding and she said, you know, you want to cut down on your meals. You got to try the stuff. It's give you great energy, put you in a great mood. And so I, you know, had done three months of it up leading up to the wedding. And right. by the time I got there, I couldn't hold my dress up. <laughs> falling down. I think people did make comments like, gee, her dress seems to be kind of falling a lot. Yeah, and dangerously low. And, and and certainly, you know, you wouldn't want a wardrobe malfunction while walking down the aisle. Exactly. So I, I, but I'm still, I was grateful that it wasn't the reverse, that I wasn't, you know, falling out of my dress because I couldn't zip it up. So right, right. thanks to Did they have to do any like, kind of like crazy last minute alterations with tape and, and, you know, you know, God knows what to keep, kind of keep you in place. The only thing was I, I, I made Donnie, unfortunately, wait at the aisle because I realized when I pulled my veil out, it wasn't steamed. Right. So he was standing there with everyone waiting while they were steaming my veil. <laughs> These are all good problems to have. At least you didn't, you know, get knocked over into the... Uh, you know, alter or anything like that. No, exactly. I mean, my, the flower girl screamed and cried the whole way down the aisle, but that's expected, so Right, I didn't right. Know. Well, I heard your son had a special role during the wedding, and he walked you down the aisle. He did, and it was, it was, I'll remember that to the day I die. You know how you have those, they say you have those flashbacks of those moments? That's going to be me looking at my son, little blue eyes, looking up at me in his tuxedo saying, I have the most important job today. And I said, you do. And right. he walked me down the aisle and then he gave a toast and he stood up at the wedding and I had no idea he was going to give a toast, but stood up and just said to the room how he loves his stepdad and he's so happy for his mom, that his mom is so in love with Donnie right. and that he can't wait to start a family. So it was really sweet. Was that the most emotional moment for you when your son gave the toast? Uh, there were so many emotional moments. When Donnie was doing his vows, when he said, I do, I got emotional. When, um, you know, he gave a toast to his mother, uh, dedicated to her. Joey sang at the wedding. Um, there was just uh, so many, so many moments. But, of course, I think my son you know, for how far he's come and right. me worrying if he would ever speak yeah. and to see him at, at my wedding saying such beautiful words just meant the world to me. Absolutely. Now, there was a special moment. Your first dance was 
what I wouldn't consider a traditional dance, which was um, <laughs> Edelweiss from Sound of Music. Um, but I have to ask, did they play any NKOTV during the uh, reception, and did you, you know, handcuff and, and do all that type of stuff? You know, we didn't do any of, you know, their songs. At first, I thought maybe we might, you know, maybe right. Donnie would break into Cover Girl or something. But yeah. no, I think everyone just had a really great time, and I know Edelweiss was not a norm. I'm not sure anybody has ever used Edelweiss, but um, Donnie had never seen The Sound of Music. And on one of wow. our dates, I was like, what? Yeah. And so, you know, Edelweiss, I, we watched in the movie, he started crying. And I thought it was such a great moment on one of our great dates that we kept it as our song. That's a nice story. Um, now, so much was made that Donnie's brother, Mark, wasn't in the wedding um, because he had his daughter's birthday. Have you guys been able to hang out with their family since? Um, not yet, but as soon as we get to Los Angeles, we have plans to. So, right. you know, we, we surprised everyone with having a wedding much sooner than we had thought because right. the place we wanted to get married um, didn't have a date until the following year. So we're like, all right, we have to wait a year. And then they had called and said, guess what? We have Labor Day open. And Donnie and I looked at each other and said, can we do it this quickly? Right. And... Um, you know, people didn't even have invitations three weeks up until the wedding. So a lot of people that, um, you know, had plans, we had to forgive and understand. And right. so the people that came, it was a small wedding and it, we couldn't ask for anything more. It was perfect. Was the honeymoon put on delay for a little bit? The, the honeymoon was so sweet and short. I, I would call it the pre-honeymoon because right. we both had to go, kind of go back to work. So it was kind of uh, uh, just a quick little trip into a New York hotel. And um, we're going to pick up where we left off soon. Nice, nice. Now, speaking of work, I know that you have the Dirty, Sexy, Funny Comedy Tour, which is, you know, perfect timing with, you know, the loss of Joan Rivers and her impact on, you know, comedy, not just female comedians, but comedy as a whole. Tell me a little bit about the tour. So the, t the tour was created like three years ago. I um, was sitting at an all-girl comedy night and thought to myself, why isn't anyone doing a huge tour? Like there's the Kings of Comedy, there's a blue collar tour. And right. I was like, let me give these girls a chance that are really funny but are not giving the platform. Right. And uh, over three years, wrote them their names down. Uh, many of them work closely with Joan. I got to know Joan Rivers over the past couple of years because of the tour. Um, she was a huge supporter of it, and we had an epic special. We've been touring all summer, and we're continuing to tour. And then the Sirius Radio, um, right. you know, we did a month's worth, and Sirius had offered me now the show, the time slot right after Howard. So Howard's my lead-in, and he'll pass the baton to me at 10 o'clock. And so this is a, another great opportunity for me to bring more female comedians on so people can hear that chicks are funny, too. And right. Perez was my first guest. I thought, who else but Perez to be my first guest on the, on the Sirius Radio? So I'm very grateful to him. I still owe him a basket. <laughs> I'm sure he'll welcome that basket. Now, i got to ask you, you know, I know we're running out of time, but I want to know, who would your dream guest be on, on, the, on the radio show? Um, my dream guest would probably be Howard Stern in studio. You know, wouldn't be that far of a walk, maybe right. 50 feet. Um, I, he did call in on my first show, but I would like to see him sitting, you know, across from me with, uh, with some good questions for him. Right. And how is the show, the talk show, different from the TV show, The View, that you were on? Um, are there, are, is it more challenging? Um, do you find it less worrisome with not having, like, a, you know, uh, stage director and, you know, all these cameras on you? Uh, you know, I love both mediums because I'm also very animated. I do, I do love the camera, but when I was testing out radio to see if I loved it, I had no idea the amount of freedom that you are allowed in satellite radio. So right. um, being able to be myself and talk for as long as I want and ask the questions that I want to ask without interruption right. <laughs> was... A dream. So for me, I found it to be, um, if I didn't have the view experience, I probably wouldn't have appreciated the radio as much as I do now.